There's already a lot going on in the world today that has caused gold and silver's prices to rise fairly dramatically. Well, we are about to add one more thing to that list, and it's a doozy. I'll explain in this video as we explore. With some news that really most of the public has yet to fully digest, there is major developments going on in the area around Taiwan right now, and I think it could have a dramatic impact on precious metals prices if things really do heat up. There's already so much going on with geopolitical tensions across the world right now. And this is just one more thing that's added to the list that many people thought could be happening sooner rather than later. But this is the situation that's going on in Taiwan right now. And it could literally send gold and silver prices exploding if there's an all-out war or an invasion that happens there. You know, I think it's a little different situation than what we're seeing with Russia and Ukraine, which is still ongoing. And, of course, we also have the military activity happening in Rafa right now in southern Gaza. And that's continuing. But likely, you know, the expectations and the situation there is one of those that's kind of settling in, so to speak. And this is something that I think that uh, could certainly heat up again with Iran, uh, but it's not, at least it's not something that's imminent right now. Uh, that uh, situation with Iran kind of subsided a bit after the trading of uh, missiles and, and drones. But the AP is reporting from Tapai, Taiwan, that they have tracked dozens of Chinese warplanes and Navy vessels off of its coast yesterday. The second day of a large military exercise launched by Beijing to show its anger over the self-governing island's inauguration of new leaders who refuse to accept its insistence that Taiwan is part of China. China has issued elaborate media statements showing Taiwan being surrounded by forces from its military, the People's Liberation Army. A new video also showed animated Chinese forces approaching from all sides and Taiwan being enclosed within a circular target area while simulated missiles hit key population and military targets. That essentially is a threat of war and invasion. Despite that, there was little sign of concern among Taiwan's 23 million people who have lived under the threat of Chinese invasion since the two sides split during a civil war back in 1949. Taiwan's parliament was mired on Friday in a dispute between political parties over procedural measures and businesses that continue to, uh, as usual, in the bustling capital of Tapai and the ports of Keelong and Kaixiong. The defense ministry said it tracked 49 Chinese warplanes and 19 Navy vessels as well as Coast Guard vessels and that 35 of the planes flew across the median line in the Taiwan Strait, the de facto boundary between the two sides over a 24-hour period from Thursday to Friday. Now, this is a situation that is controversial and is somewhat nuanced as I don't think that the United States actually recognizes Taiwan as an independent nation officially. And I'm not sure that the UN does either. However, this does date back to 1949 when there was a civil war. And essentially, because it is an island, it's not very easy to invade um, or to subdue, much as the case throughout history with most island nations where that has not been uh, feasible or possible. Uh, the the British Isles are an example of that, too, where really you can only think of two times in history where they have been conquered as a people. Um, and that has a long, long history. Now, Taiwanese Marine and Coast Guard vessels, along with air and ground-based missile units, have been put on alert, and particularly around the Taiwan-controlled island chains of Qingman and Matsu, just off China's coast and far from Taiwan's main island. These are alert areas, which means that this thing could be escalating to a larger, more broad 
uh, conflict uh, or potential, especially since Biden has mentioned two times that if Taiwan is invaded, that he would send American troops. Now, we know with Biden's gaffes and the like that uh, even though as definitive as those answers were, uh, the administration itself has pulled back from that, from those answers. But uh, nonetheless, it's possible this could reach and, and become a more a wider scale. And of course, in those sanctions are, are also something that will be on the table, obviously, with China doing this action. And if that were to be the case, what does that mean for gold and silver? Well, that means that nations are going to continue to stockpile gold because of the weaponization of this. The dollar will be weaponized even further with China. And of course, we depend on China. China depends on us for everything from trade to the manufacturing of a lot of different products and goods and goods that have come out of China. Um, and so what would that mean? That would be a shock to the economy and a lot of unknowns with regards to the dollar and de-dollarization efforts could be sped up. Uh, the stockpiling of gold by sovereign nations around the world and as they stockpile these metals, uh, well, gold in particular, uh, that's going to bolster the price of gold. And just the uncertainty factor is a great concern. It's, it's something because of the already uh, multiple levels and fronts that we find ourselves in. Um, and could this lead to potentially a World War III? Well, who knows? Um, there's a, there is a lot of speculation that we very well could be in World War III to some extent already uh, with proxies and the like. Um, could it be active war? Who knows? It's, uh, there's a lot of different things that are going on, but this situation is concerning as it's developing. Um, facing external challenges and threats, we will continue to maintain the values of freedom and democracy, said Taiwan's new president, Lai ching Te, uh, who told sailors and top security officials that he visited a marine base last week in Jiayuan, just south of the capital in Tapai. The Pentagon said the U.S. was monitoring very closely the joint Chinese drills. It said Beijing's actions are reckless, risk escalation and erode long-standing norms that have maintained regional peace and stability for decades. We strongly urge Beijing to act with restraint, it said. Um, Chinese, China's military said it has expanded exercises around Taiwan uh, where punishment for separatist forces seeking independence. It sends Navy ships and warplanes into the Taiwan Strait and other areas around the island almost daily to wear down Taiwan's defenses and seek to intimidate its people who firmly backed their de facto independence. Uh, now, in an inauguration speech on, on Monday of last week, Lai urged Beijing to stop its military intimidation and said Taiwan was a sovereign, independent nation in which sovereignty lies in the hands of its people. As soon as the leader of Taiwan took office, he challenged the one China principle and blatantly sold the two-state theory the spokesperson of Taiwan's affairs office, Chen Pinhao, said in the statement, uh, the one China principle asserts that there is only one China and that Taiwan is a part of China under Communist Party rule. Beijing views Taiwan as a renegade province and has been upping its military threats even as the island's electorate overwhelmingly favors de facto independence. So the people want something different than what the Chinese government Chinese Communist Party want and the rule there. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see how things play out. And of course, uh, gold and silver will be affected by this as the market in general will, by the way, too. So, you know, it's as is the case with um, most all of these other geopolitical ideas. My audience consists of folks that are on both sides of these issues. And likely this situation is no different uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, we can, one thing we can agree on is that precious metals will be affected by this. And I think even more so in this situation because it just expands it. It expands it out even more to, to a situation where uh, gold and silver really have no choice but to, to uh, go up, I think, at this point. Uh, they're already, especially gold, has been on fire. The silver has been on a pretty sustained uh, rally here. And with China being so important with the manufacturing and the supply chain, 
with uh, manufacturing goods and services for not only themselves, but outside of the country, I think that could bode well for silver, especially. Now, why would you say that? Because if they are essentially isolated, um, then that means that there's going to be less trade and less goods and services produced outside of the country, which is where a lot of the silver demand is going to take, take place. Well, they will ramp up silver use for military um, uh, applications, obviously, and I think that they will trade with other nations that will, will, will require that silver. And, and it also could mean that more silver would be needed for um, domestic use in the United States if we produce our own goods and services or other areas where silver is used. Uh, but there could be the off chance that silver may be affected negatively in the short term as Taiwan also produces a lot of silver for semiconductors and gold too, um, and, and needs a lot of silver for those uses. So it'd be very interesting to see, but I think the initial shock of it will send the prices going up high, maybe even dramatically up higher. Let me know what your thoughts are about this situation in the comments section down below. There's never a shortage of, of, uh, of things going on in the world these days that could have an impact on precious metals. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.